everybody, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and today we're gonna get started on a brand new mini album, which is eight and a half by eight and a half, and um, it's going to feature Stamperia's Imagine Collection. So for this mini album, and it'll be also in the description below this video box, um, but for this we are using a 22 pack and a 10 pack to complete the album. But I will leave links below in the description. And again, it's eight and a half by eight and a half. And so I've started by making my base album. And as you know, uh, if you go to the playlist for, for Imagine, Stamperia Imagine, I'm gonna go ahead and make it Stamperia Imagine since Graphic 45 already had an Imagine collection and I already have a project on that. So if you search on that, you'll find the whole uh, a playlist with uh, all the videos associated to this build. The first one is going to be how to be build the base album, which is generic, it's not specific to Imagine or Stamperia's Imagine. And then the following videos are going to be um, specific to the design of this album and the interactive components associated with it. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and get started with page one. And this is a pocket page. And here's my page one. And I just need a second. I got my little cheat sheet here. Um, get my flaps organized. We're gonna do four flaps and this is going to, these are gonna be attached to um, both the um, spine side and the pocket side. And I did that backward. The spine side is here because this is page one. Here's my pocket. And I've got four of these. They're gonna get installed like so. So there'll be two on each side. And this is gonna be my base page. So let's go ahead and get our flaps in. Excuse me. And let me get my pick tool. Here we go. All right. So these are four by six, um, actually they're four by six and a half. So you're gonna score a half inch on the six and a half inch side. You'll need a total of four of those for page one. And here is what I'm thinking. I think I'm gonna offset these slightly. So they are definitely gonna go horizontal because that's the cut of my paper, which is horizontal. I kind of like that look. So that's what I'm thinking I'm gonna do. Okay. Yeah. All right, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna do um, a double flap. So you're gonna open it and you'll find something and then you open it again, then you'll be on the base page. Which means I'm going to connect this flap to the inside of this one so that when I lay it down, there's only a single hinge on the outside. And I'm gonna get up here closer so you can see what I mean. So instead of laying them down like this, where you see two hinges on the outside, I'm gonna turn this over, attach it to the inside of the top flap, like so. And then this will still get laid down, but when I'm done, you'll have a single um, score line to look at. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach these two, and then I'm gonna trim it down so that um, we don't have this little bit exposed. So when you pull the first flap, there's a little surprise that there's a second one. So after I attach them, I'm gonna trim that little piece off, and hopefully you can see that. I'm trying to look and see if, it's like a eighth of an inch that needs to be trimmed down, but first I'll attach it. So the idea is that when this is close, when this flap is down, um, this second, the second piece here kind of disappears behind it. So it's a little bit of a surprise when you open up the book. Okay, so that's in. So again, this will get attached to the pocket page, like so. And you'll open it up and then there'll be a second flap here. So now that we've done that, I am gonna go ahead and do the second one. It's pretty easy. If you start with the tape going both ways, all you need to do is turn one of them over and stick it down close to, but not interfering with the hinge. And, sorry. I need to get this lined up. The first one went together so easy. <laughs> That happens. Okay. 
Oh, it shifted on me. I need to pull that up. There we go. Sorry about that. It shifted. Okay, that's lined up. Okay, so now I'm just going to trim off that little sliver and just make sure it's square. Okay, so there we go. So now you can see it's kind of hidden here. There's one and two. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing here. Trim it real quick. And I, I pre-trimmed my uh, designer paper here and I trimmed it to fit on this four by six panel. So it's five and seven eighths by um, three and seven eighths. So now that I know that I've trimmed a little bit off the second panel, I know that one will have to be a little bit smaller. So keep that in mind. We're probably going to have to trim those down just a little bit. Okay, and then then I want to install these, and I'm just doing that because I want that to be right side up. I want these to be slightly offset, like so. And I'm not going to measure. I'm going to eyeball. And I've already got my tape on, so... I'm going to turn it this way. So each of these are just over four. So if you put them side by side, it's almost the, the distance, the width of the paper, the pocket page. So I'm lining my pocket page up on my grid. And I think what I want to do is that's an inch and that's an inch. I think I'm just going to pull this in an inch on one side, like so. And then do the same thing on the flip side, like so. And I kind of like that. Yeah. So an inch it is. And to square this up a little. Hope everybody's doing well. Julie and I um, got back from Creativation. Sorry, it's not sliding like I want it to on Monday night and so we're still kind of recovering from being out away from uh, shipping for a few days but things are getting under control and uh, it was a good good show we're very excited to be bringing you a new paper line from a company called um, actually three col six collections from a company called um, Blue Fern Studios who um, are here in the United States so we're kind of excited about that um, they've recently undergone some ownership changes. We really like the company, so we're anxious to be bringing you that paper. They um, have given us some samples. The paper is really beautiful. I know you guys are going to like it. And we shouldn't. it shouldn't be too long. They're right over here in Arizona, so it shouldn't be too long before we have something in stock um, listed for you guys to take a look at. It's gorgeous paper. And they're a lot like Stamperia in that they have, uh, their collections feature 10 double-sided designs and um, we're trying to decide if we're gonna sell it in 10 packs or 20 packs. I'm not sure, Julie's working on that. But I think you guys are gonna love it. Okay, so that's in place. So now I'm going to want to put some magnets down to hold this and it's pretty thick. So I'm thinking I might have to do a couple of magnets. So let's see how that goes. Let's try. And I'm, I'm looking at, I need a, a contrast sheet for you guys. So I'm looking at, uh, there's the edge. Instead of coming down here where the second it doesn't fit. Hang on. Hang on. I'm going to cut it down so I can slip it in. Let's 
seven and a half. Um, I'm, I'm, I want to demonstrate why I'm doing something, so just be patient with me. Okay, so these things overlap. So if I put a magnet here and it has to travel through these two plus these two, plus any mats that I put on them, I just don't think it's going to hold. So I'm going to start by trying to place a magnet here and see if I can get, if it's strong enough to be attracted through these two, which I know it'll be three, six sheets of paper before it has to, um, before it meets this side. So we're going to try that. It may not work. I'm going to add some paper layers in there to see. I hadn't tested it earlier because I really wasn't sure if I was going to double these panels up. Okay, so that's one. And then I may go ahead and do another one down here. See if we can get it to hold. So I know I'm going to have um, another piece of cardstock here, another piece of cardstock here, and another one here. Good grief. And then lastly, the base page will be covered up. So let's see if we can still get that magnet to hold. And let's see if it'll hold all of them. And it looks like it will. I'm going to try to burnish this down a little bit more to get it to behave. So it doesn't have to rely on the magnet. So that's looking pretty good. Um, so I think we can get away with just um, one pair of magnets. But if you really want to, and of course there'll be additional layers here because if you put photos on these layers, I say that now, I'm gonna rethink it. I think I'm gonna put magnets on both sides just because of that. Because once you lay in your photos on top of the papers, it might just be too much for it to stay shut. Okay, so let's go ahead and plan on doing a magnet on this, on this side as well. Okay, sorry about that jibber jabber. I had to think that through and you got the benefit of listening to my thought process. Okay, so I put that on top and I'm gonna rethink it. I'm gonna put this uh, here and then it can go through just a little few, a fewer, fewer layers. There we go. So this one, I'm gonna to move to the inside. I also, as a rule, don't like to have my magnets on the very top layer for a couple of reasons. One, I think if, depending on how thick your paper is, sometimes it can show through. The other reason I don't like it is if you have a magnet on the opposing side, sometimes it wants to grab to the other side of the page. So there's two reasons, really. Okay. Let me get a fresh piece of tape. I just realized I'm not sure I pressed the record button. Oh, I did. Thank God. I don't know. I'm losing my mind these days. That's what happens when you take a week off from videos. Okay, there we go. So now it's on the inside, both of them, so you can't really see it. You don't have to deal with um, the bump in the paper on the cover. Also, like I said, it won't be as attracted to an opposing page. So even though this is going to oppose the inside cover and it doesn't have a magnet, it's just a good rule of thumb for all your pages. Okay, so that's it. All right. In just a minute, I'll be back after I've lined up my designer papers and we'll lay those in. Okay, we're gonna start with the base page since we know that our flaps are in and then we're gonna come back and cover the flaps. And I've trimmed down to the four by six, um, but remember we trim these just a little bit more so I might have to re um, dry fit those and adjust them accordingly. So we have a choice, this, this direction or this direction. So when I look at the back of it, it's this direction, but it's really whatever you like, whatever you think is best. Um, I think I like that, so I'm just going to put it down in its correct orientation. I want the base to be kind of simple because I want my flaps to be the more de decorative pieces here. Especially since really basically only an inch is being exposed on the bottom and top. So, 
Oh, hey, thanks everybody for giving me feedback on those quick videos that I did from Creativation. That, that's helpful for us to know what's looking good to you guys. And then as soon as we get some of the new paper in, I will do some shares or reveals so you guys can get some, uh, get another look at the page by page of the new collections. Also, I would love to hear from you guys in the comments of the new Graphic 45 collections, Blue Ocean, uh, Fruit and Floral, or Floral and Fauna, I said it wrong, and then, um, what's the last one? Farmhouse. Which one would you guys like to see an album on first? Um, so I'm definitely going to do an album with one of those three collections next, um, so I'd like to hear from you guys on which one you'd like to see. Okay, that's in. All right, so now let's look for some decorative pieces. So I've got my eight pieces cut out here and they're ready to lay in. So we just have to decide which ones we want on top. These are one-sided because it's uh, the back page, so I know I have to use that side. Ooh, I like that. But I also like these two. Now I have to stop for a second and remind myself what the inside liner looks like because, okay, this is what it's gonna be. So this is the inside liner. Just because I want page one to look nice with it, right? Which side is it? This is the inside liner. This side, so I kinda like this blue. There it is, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lay that down, dry fit this real quick, set that aside, and then we'll work on the flip side. Okay. Okay, so the top one looks like it's just right, which doesn't surprise me, because it was really only the second one that I was trimming. since I did a video. So I want to thank everybody for subscribing to our channel. And I also want to share with you that we just met a milestone on our channel where we just went past, in fact, it happened while we were at Creativation, uh, 10,000 subscribers. And we really appreciate you guys taking the time to subscribe. I understand not all of you are in the United States and that we only ship to the United States, but we're still happy to have you on our channel and hope, you, hope that you enjoy our tutorials. At the moment, and I really don't see it changing much for us because of the cost of shipping, we only ship to the United States, but we're still happy to share all of our tutorials with anybody who wants to, you know, enjoy them. So if you're outside the United States, we appreciate you being here. And then for you U.S. subscribers, we appreciate you being here as well. And we always want to encourage you to take a look at our shop um, before you purchase anywhere else. And, you know, if it makes sense and our prices are right, which we think they are, we really appreciate it if you, um, you know, buy your project papers from us. But it's not a requirement. And our tutorials are free for anybody to enjoy. And um, I've, I've said this before in the past, but there's no plan to change our business model. We'll continue to bring you free tutorials. Um, we won't turn it into a subscription process. Um, if you want to start a project, um, that project will remain online for you to reference uh, until you're finished with your project. So if it's out there now, it'll stay out there unless YouTube changes its policy. We won't change ours, okay? And then if you have questions about anything in the tutorial that you see, you can always contact me either through our uh, website at www.scrapandcreate.com if you want to share a question or comment privately. And then if you want to just put a shout out right there in the comments, we do our best to answer them. 
If you have questions about the build, um, I really like it when people leave it in the, in the comments because if I answer it, I might not just be answering your question, but be answering for some other people as well, which I think is, is valuable. So it's up to you, but um, we appreciate it either way. I think that's what I'm gonna do here. But I have to look at the back sides of these. Yep, that's what I wanna do. Um, most of these are pretty modeled, but the um, there are words on a lot of them, so they are directional. So you have to spend a little bit of time looking at some of the fine print to make sure you're going the right direction. Okay, this one might need to be trimmed. Let's see if I can get that to close. Yeah, it looks like it will. So I don't think I need to trim it. Better double check that. Check twice, cut once. It's gonna make it. Okay, and uh, if you just tuned in, or some somehow you were asleep at the wheel when I started, this is page one of the Imagine a Stamperia Imagine collection. And I'm using two paper packs. One is the 22 sheet and one is the 10 sheet for this album. Dry fit. Now this one I do have to trim down. that'll do it. So since I trimmed it, I'm going to ink it and I always ink the edges of my papers if I'm applying them to black or brown. If I'm using white or cream, it really depends on what I think looks best. But if it's a dark background, um, I like to ink my edges because I don't like my white core to show up against the, the dark base album. It's really a personal preference. It does make it go a little slower, but I like the look. So it's truly preference. And for those of you that want to know what I'm using, I'm using a product called Powder Puffs and it will be in the link below in the description. Um, I really like these ink pads. I don't stamp so I don't have a lot of other ink pads um, and I like the fact that the pad itself is the applicator so I don't have to go looking for it. You can also use this with stamps. Um, I don't, but you can. It's, it's perfectly suitable for any kind of stamping. And the color that I'm using today is called mahogany. I always tend toward the dark colors because I don't really distress into the paper. I really just go around the edges to knock the white core off. Now, if you like to distress into your image, I would recommend going a little bit lighter. Um, this might look a little too heavy, but it's really preference, like I said. Okay, so now we need to work out how this is going to look. And I like these two um, on opposing sides. Let's see how it looks, because I like the this trim to be on the outside. So I think I'm kind of liking that. And then we still have need a couple of pieces to go across from it. And I'm not caring for that too much. Luckily, luckily, I have a whole stack of these, so let's pull some out. Okay, assuming this is on the outside. Oh, these are vertical. So I'm looking at the at the words. So these are vertical. I need horizontal pieces. So hang tight. I have to separate them. That's my vertical. had these separated earlier so bear with me these are vertical and these are horizontal okay 
I'm gonna have to find some additional paper. Okay, so here we go. So that is that. I'll switch it like this and like this. There we go. Okay, let's see if these fit. Okay, let's start by getting these in. This needs to be trimmed. I'm going to trim off this side. I'm going to make sure I'm not interfering with my hinge here. Re ink that. Okay. should have done that before I inked it, but I didn't. And it looks good. Okay, good. this was the plan yes okay it looks like this one needs to be trimmed down height and width so let's start trimming down the height let's see how that looks a little more like an eighth of an inch. Yep. That looks right. There we go. That looks good. Now I'm going to close this real quick just to make sure that it's not interfering with the hinge on the flap. And that's pretty tight. So I think I'll take a little more off. Okay. 
Okay, I don't give the measurements for my designer paper for a few reasons. One, I really think that you're the happiest you're going to be is if you trim it down to your rough estimate and then dry fit and adjust. As you add score lines to your project, um, it can make the, the base um, cardstock either a little smaller or larger than you're anticipating. So I think for your best result, you dry fit and, and adjust. Now, having said that, the other reason I don't give the cut list for the designer paper is because some people like a larger or smaller mat on their um, cardstock. I do a 16th inch mat, that's very tight. Um, I'd say that an eighth and a quarter inch are the most common. Um, so that's the other reason I don't do it. Um, so it's really up to you. I like just the slightest border, but some people like a, a bolder border. Um, so that's why um, you'll find that I don't give that cut list. So you have to make that decision on your own and then take your cut list and back off whatever that number is. So for me, since it's a 16th inch border, I basically make it an eighth inch shorter and an eighth inch narrower to give me that 16th inch border. If you want an eighth inch, you're gonna take off a quarter inch height and width, so etc. So it's really, um, it's personal preference when it comes to the size of the border you want. Okay, I don't. And then the other thing is, like I said, you rough cut it and then you just put your little tick mark and then you trim it to fit. It's a little more tedious, but I think the result is superior than trying to pre-cut everything. Okay, that's looking good. I'm gonna to try to close the flap now just to make sure it's not interfering because this is really thick paper. And is it, is it? So I wanna make sure it'll close without buckling, but I also wanna make sure when I'm closing it, it's not pushing the paper forward. Uh, and it was a little bit, so I'm gonna take a tiny bit more off. And I mean a tiny, it was like a 32nd of an inch. Okay, now I re-ink the side that I trimmed. on this side. Yeah, I caught it before I got it down. So this side didn't get inked. And you pr it probably not coming across on the camera, but when I go to lay it down, if it's on my side, it's really obvious to me that it doesn't have ink on it. Because that white just jumped off this page. When I say white, I mean the white core. which I've never seen designer paper not have white core. So, I mean, your cardstock can be solid, like this brown doesn't have a white core. But if it's a designer paper, it means ink has been added after the paper was made, not during the process. So it's gonna have a white core. Okay, so there we go. I'm liking it, but I really think I was gonna do it that way. All right, so that is um, page one. All done. Okay, now we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna start. You can try that again. We're gonna flip it over and start page two. And I'm finding now that I'm turning it over, it is quite heavy. So if I had it to do again, I think I would have used a larger magnet. I think the magnet placement is correct. Um, and when it's laying here, I can hear it snapping. It wants to close. But um, 
but when I tip it over in its own weight, it wants to open up. So I would recommend a larger magnet here. And if I do another page like this, I will do the larger magnet. So I use the small basic gray magnets. I would recommend the large basic gray magnets. Um, or the um, alternative would be to add another magnet in between here somewhere. Um, yeah, so if you added one more magnet, so if you used a total of three sets instead of, so using three magnets here and three magnets here, it's not it's not going anywhere. So there's a chance that I may come back and add a magnet here, another small magnet here, and camouflage it with some embellishment. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and go get started on page two. So I just want to share that with you. You live and learn. Even though I had tested it with all those layers of paper, um, you still don't always know what your result's going to be. So that's it for page one. We're on to page two. I'm gonna take a quick break, get organized, and be right back. Okay, here we are on page two. So this is gonna be my base page, um, but I'm gonna set it aside for a second. We're gonna add two flaps. And the only reason I wanted to share that with you is because I'm considering the print here in my um, flap placement. So when my flaps are in the closed position, I want to be able to see this dream and do what you love. So I'm going to be placing these two flaps just inside this edge and then these are gonna go here um, and there's gonna be a top and a bottom. But I just want you to see that it's important to know what you're putting here to, uh, to figure out where you want your, your, your flaps to be because I don't wanna halfway cover that, that word. Now the alternative would be to leave the flowers exposed and then to see this when you open it up. But this is kind of where I'm leaning. So I'm going to apply these two to the top and bottom edges and I'm going to come in about I think a half an inch. Okay, we'll set that aside. And it looks like I've already got my tape on here. And these are four by six and a half. Four by six and a half, you'll need two of those. We're gonna place one on the top and one on the bottom. And this is page two, so that means this is my spine and this is my pocket edge. Get my pick tool and I don't see that I have a ruler handy in here, so I'm going to line up uh, my pocket page here and then use my grid to come in a half an inch. It's about a half an inch. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Well, this side is, I don't really have to come in a half an inch. All I have to do is line it up because I want these two to overlap. So you really only have to measure the one and then the other one gets installed directly across from it. So I'm gonna use this edge to line it up. And I know it's hard to see, but I am lining these two edges. And then I'm gonna slide it into place. There we go. Okay, so those are in. That goes like that. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Now we need a magnet. And this is gonna be simple because it's just gonna be these two, so it's not gonna be complicated with lots and lots of layers. So, so when you're designing, I think it really, it depends, you know, the paper that you're using can play a big, a large role in magnet placement and how many layers um, you can put together. Because the thicker your designer paper is, um, the more you have to consider how much weight um, is going to be held together by you know, a magnet. Of course, none of that matters if you're using a tie, right? Um, so it's just something to consider. The, this paper, I'm doing something a little differently. The designer paper is about consistent with what, what uh, I'm used to with Graphic 45, which I have the most experience with. Um, but what is different is I actually made this album out of 
what I think is probably 80 pound cardstock. And I just happen to have this brown cardstock in my stash. And I really like the way it looked with this designer paper, but I think it's actually a little too thick for, for many albums um, because you, or you have to use larger magnets, one of the two, because it's heavy. Now in this case, it's only gonna have to go through two designer sheets, right? But when you do something like a waterfall or where there's stacked papers, you really gotta consider that. So let's get rid of that magnet. Okay, that's it. And you know what we're doing here, because I already showed it to you. Here's my dream paper. And I'm just dry fitting real quick and it looks good. Looks very good. And it is inked, so we're ready to go. Okay, so now we've got these two papers and I'm going to, and they're very simple, I know that, and I did that on purpose because this pattern is actually gonna be replicated on page three. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay these in. So let's dry fit it real fast. And it looks pretty good. About that I had to take a quick big break talk to my husband now I'm back um, and I was just dry fitting um, these pieces to make sure they look good and I'm happy with it and it's inked so oh by the way we have these in our shop now and there'll be a link in the description um, these are pick slash weeding tools and um, we've had so many people ask us about it. And I know a lot of our customers, there's just no craft stores next to them anymore. So um, we did uh, decide to start carrying it. So if you guys are looking for that, uh, there'll be a link in the description um, just below. So uh, for those of you that are new, the way that it works is if you click the show more just underneath the video display box, there's a show more, click that. The first thing you're gonna see is a material list. So anything that I used in this project that we sell in our shop, there'll be a link to it. And let me tell you right now, we don't sell uh, core card stock. Um, it's, we just can't compete with the big box and price. And even if we could, um, by the time we added shipping onto it, cause it's heavy, you guys wouldn't buy it from us anyway. So we don't carry the core card stock. I'm happy to tell you where we get our card stock, but we don't carry it. But everything else you see in the project, um, if it's available in our store, there'll be a link. And then if you keep scrolling, you're gonna find the cut list for the project. And the cut list includes the base album, the, um, the flaps and um, the base album cut list, not the designer cut list, but any of the interactive components that are part of this project, the cut list is right there. And sorry, I just took a break to walk across the room to show you this is what I typically use for my albums. Astro Brights is from a company called Nina, and I they make excellent smooth cardstock. I'm, I love this black cardstock. I can't recommend it enough. You can also get white and cream, and I use those as well. However, I do find that the black holds up the best. Um, it must be something to do with the saturation of the ink in the paper development process, because it feels a little bit thicker than the cream and the white. Whenever I do have a white album, this is also the brand I use, Nina. Um, and I, like I said, I can't recommend it enough. This comes in 50 sheet packs, and I, I buy mine at Walmart for $3.97 a pack, and that's a bargain. Um, and it holds up, and I've got albums that I've you know had for years now, and it has not fallen apart, so I really recommend it. Um, 
Some people like to use something thicker. That's 65 pound, but I really like it. Okay, especially if you're doing interactive um, albums where you know you're adding you're adding layers and weight to each page just by the interactive components. If you do a simple album where it's just an eight by eight and you don't have any interactive components, I, I think a heavier cardstock is fine, but I'm adding a lot of weight to my book just by adding flaps and pockets and tags. So I just wanna share that with you guys. I, I mentioned it before and people ask me all the time, so I'm gonna keep sharing that. Um, you're just gonna, that's gonna be an ongoing theme. I'm gonna keep reminding people of what that cardstock is and where you can get it. Because you can't get started without a good cardstock. You can have all the designer paper in the world, but if you don't have something good to lay it down on, you're kind of in a holding pattern. <laughs> so the other brand that I really love is um, the Stampin' Up! papers. Now, having said that, I think, um, you know, for me, it's just the price point is the barrier. Because um, you need anywhere from 35 uh to 40 sheets to do uh, eight by eight, eight and a half by eight and a half mini album. Similar uh, to the ones that you see that I construct. So that's about what I use for each one. And, th and that gets pretty darn expensive pretty fast when you're using the Stampin' Up! paper. But from a quality perspective, I don't think you can beat it. Um, but it is, it's very expensive. And the first thing you're gonna do is cover it up. <laughs> So it's really um, up to you. If you're a distributor, it's probably a good idea to use that in your projects, but uh, if you're like me, you don't sell the paper and you don't get it at a discount, it's pretty expensive. Okay, all right. So there is the finished look of page two. Now we need to find some uh, coordinating pieces to go here, and you're gonna come with me as I flip through this and try to find something that we like together. Um. I love this paper. It's so pretty. And it's really bold. You could almost, because it's got so much texture and interest all by itself, you could almost just leave it as is. Um, but you know me, I'm a mini maker. It's gonna get covered. Okay, I'm gonna use, because this is such a bold print, I'm gonna use something very simple on the inside flaps. So let's go ahead, and it's not ink, so you'll have to, Bear with me as I dry fit and ink these. Okay. And then once we get that done, that's the end of page two. It's a very, very simple page. And then on page three, we're going to have um, a nice little waterfall feature. And it's gonna feature the cut aparts in the collection. So these were just under four inches each, and I'll give you the measurements when we get to it, but these were just under four inches, so I designed the flap and, and the waterfall around the size of the cut apart. You don't have to do that, but I typically do. If there's a feature in the paper collection like that, I try to design around it. That's why. That's also why it's difficult. Look, there's the back side of this. No wonder it matches so well. Um, that's why it's so hard to design your um, interactive components ahead of getting the paper. At least in my mind, I, I like to consider it. So that I'm cutting around the images and leveraging all the cut aparts that are in the collection. And if you design everything ahead of time, you may not be taking advantage of those features. But it's up to you. I find the stronger the pattern or images in the collection, the more important it is to design around the paper. Okay, I need to ink this. And one of the reasons I do a standard four by six um, flap in a lot of my albums is twofold. One, that's a very, co very common size for a photograph. The other reason is because this is eight by eight, the pocket page is eight by eight, I trim these pieces down to eight by eight. Guess what's left over out, out of a 12 inch sheet? A four inch slice. So it makes for a perfect flap. So that is the other reason why you see this flap size over and over again, because that's what's left off, off my 12 by 12 page after I've trimmed it down to fit here. which also lends itself to a four by four. So 
So it's those two reasons. One, the size of most photos, and two, that that's the size of the paper I trimmed off, the scrap that was left over. It's inked, it didn't look like it, but it is. Okay, let's turn this right side up again. And there it is, lovely, lovely. Okay, so the next time we come back, we'll be working on page three.